All right, Power Bite Thoughts and Imaginations. Now, this is very special to me because I love to think. <laughs> I think we all love to think, but I love creativity. I remember back in the 90s when I was working for Dr. Summerall and I just started, it was when I, in my 20s when I just started to learn this gift of editing and all that jazz. And I was just, all I had were tape decks. I didn't even have a nonlinear system at that point. And I was, I was, I mean, I was in the groove one day and um, those of the creative people, they understand what that term means. That means it just flows. And I was just loving. I mean, I'm just sitting there and boom, 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 boom. Thoughts and ideas and creativity's coming while I'm editing one of my TV shows. And and I'm sitting there and, it, and I think, I, honestly, it probably was like 11 o'clock at night. I, I think I was working late. And I was like, God, why do I love this so much? Why do I love doing, being creative? And he said, well, Keith, you're made in my image and I am a creator. Well, that that was a big moment in my life because it not only just in creativity, but in other areas of life when I see the image of God. OK, and um, what was interesting about that is that. At, during that time in the 90s, Pastor John Osteen was still alive and his son Joel was doing his TV show and producing it. And then later in years, you know, of course, Pastor John passed away and then Joel took over Lakewood and and I heard Joel preaching and he said something along the same lines about the creative side that he is and, and that God is a creator, you know. And it really brought me a lot of joy to see that Joel experienced the same thing that I did, you know. So, men, and men like creativity. We like to think things out. That's why we build stuff, you know. That's why we like doing carpentry work and everything. Because there is a creative side to man that's part of deity. And he loves to create something. And he loves to sit back like God. Look at it and say, well done, you know. So creativity is very important. So when I heard um, Andrew Womack recently talk about thoughts and imaginations, that was something that triggered in me this creative side. And then I realized how creativity is so important, how thoughts and imaginations, everybody has that. Everybody has thoughts and imaginations, okay? See, as we are made in his image, we are given that godly trait or godly traits. One being creativity. The imagination is a gift to the creative process. I often tell people you have to get what is in your head out here. Okay. Now that is a challenge. All right. For most, that is a real big challenge. And learning to get there, you know, is a process. So we are given an imagination to dream freely as part of our free will. Angels have a free will and scripture shows us as they also have an imagination. Angels are free will beings. In Isaiah, at the fall of Satan, Isaiah 14, 13 says, For you have said in your heart. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt the throne. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Lucifer had dreams of taking God's kingdom. Thoughts and imaginations. The word thought, an individual act or product of thinking. Something such as an opinion or belief. In the mind, he spoke his thoughts freely. The intellectual product of an organized views and principles of a period, place, group, or individual. Thoughts in the Strong's Greek, number 3540, if you want to know. From the Leo, <laughs> a perception, i.e. purpose or the intellect, disposition itself, okay? 
Imagination, the act or power of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses ooh, or never before wholly perceived in reality. That's important. Creative ability, ability to confront or deal with the problem. And then let's see the thinking of active mind. Creative ability, okay. What does scripture say about thoughts? Well, 1 Corinthians 10, 5, New King James, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The New Living Translation says, we destroy every proud obstacles that keeps people from knowing God out obstacles okay um, we capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ how powerful are your thoughts Lucifer's first excuse me Lucifer's first fall was over a thought or imagination for you have said in your heart It makes me wonder how many times I have fallen due to my own thoughts. Matthew 5, 28, the new King James, but I say to you that whoever looks on a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So man being a three part being a spirit, soul and body. Okay. When he looks upon, he looks. It's not even acting on it. He looks, he's creating his imagination. And he's thinking of what he wants to do. See, he's already, Jesus took it further. Jesus said, you know, you, you've committed the sin in your heart. But given the opportunity, being that you're a three-part being, the flesh is willing, you know, but the heart, I mean, the flesh is weak, but the heart, you know, the heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let me get that right. So what happens is you being a three-part being, you've already created that scenario in your mind. If I've given the opportunity with that woman, I'm going to do it. Your spirit has already looked upon or created that, you know, or your mind. Let me say this. Let me say this. Your mind's created or you know, you've created that scenario. Your body's going to give into it because it enjoys the pleasure of it. So at least two parts of your being. And Jesus said the heart has already done it. So now we got three parts. You've created that scenario. And he says that you've already created in your heart. Now, in your mind, you have looked lustfully. So in your soul, you have already created the process of what you want to do. You have imagined, created what you want to do. At this point, two thirds of your being, being is willing to give into the temptation given the opportunity. Jesus did take it a step farther. He said, has already committed the adultery with her in his heart. He took it to the heart and or the spirit of man. His emphasis was not on the physical sin, but the spiritual sin. Lust and covetousness. Now, I have a whole thing on covetousness coming. I'm working on it right now. i got three or four things I'm working on. So, such as pornography, romance novels, films, they create a scenario in your mind to covet or lust for someone else's affection that should only be met by your spouse or God. Yes, I said romance novels. You imagine, create a scenario in which a fictional character is meeting your emotional and physical needs. When we are looking for love in all the wrong places, we create a situation in our lives that is unstable. 
going from one person to another, each being a different personality, physically, mentally, and spiritually. We are in a constant state of change, often causing confusion within ourselves. A double-minded person is unstable in all his ways, James 1.8. I like this, I don't like that. Will they change, etc., etc.? The human being, being in his image, wants stability and faithfulness. Lust involves the emotions of man. Okay? Triggering the spirit of man. Lust is a heart issue. I'm still talking about thoughts and imaginations. This is where we get it from. Okay? If we have a lust problem, you don't have a physical addiction. You have a spiritual problem. Deal with the root, not the fruit. See, lust is covetousness, okay? People who have this issue should make more daily devotional time. You put more in you over here than you should be over here. Put more of God in you, okay? You don't have to do an hour first day. You can do five minutes, ten minutes. Grow each day. Go. Five minutes for a few days. Do ten minutes for a few days. Start by growth, okay? Lust after in Matthew. You lust after, okay? You covet after. The strongs to the strongs for lust means to long for, covet, lust after. See the heart, set the heart upon from let's see, to set the heart upon, longing for Man creates scenarios in his mind to meet his needs, thus the reason for the, the natural entertainment that costs billions of dollars annually. Man has a need. People know it. And it costs money. You have to... Money. Now listen, you are complete in him. Regardless of your social status, Colossians 3.10 says, And you are complete in him who is the head of all physical and power. Of, uh, principality and power, excuse me. Alright, so thoughts and imaginations. All of these go down to, see your thoughts and imaginations, they, they create these scenarios in yourself that haven't even happened. Okay? It, they're just there and see the act of it you know Jesus talked about the spirit of man he's already done it your heart that's it you know that's the sin in your heart okay so understand this Philippians 4 18 fix your thoughts on what is true okay thoughts and imaginations fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Imagine things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Okay? Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Think about thoughts and imaginations. Think about things on above and not on the earth. That's in Colossians. Ephesians 4, 20. Let the Spirit change your way of thinking. Psalms 1914, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Okay, so we take captivity of every thought to what? Make it obedient to Christ. Your thoughts run wild without self-control and discipline. Why? That is why mind renewal is so important. Renewing of the mind is the growth process to spiritual maturity and perfection. Taking those thoughts and making them obedient. Learning the will and the purpose and the will of God. Let your mind be free with the word of God. This is good news. You can still have good thoughts. You can still have good imaginations. Let it be free of the word of God. Okay? See things. Thoughts and imaginations are used for the positive also. Imagine, for example, imagine what you would do if you were healed. You got a sickness, things you can't do. 
a vacation you can't take. Say you can't, you, you, this is just one area. You're thinking about healing, your body being healed. You're imagining, what do I want to do? What if there is a vacation I can do that I can't do sick? What do I want to do? A vacation you can't take. A hiking or a ski trip. See yourself. Think about, imagine yourself going through that vacation. See, you're seeing yourself healed. You seeing yourself, you know, made whole. You're imagining, you're creating that scenario in the positive. What would you do if you were healed? What would you do if you had peace in your heart? Well, you can do that right now. You've got peace. Now, one of Abraham's first acts of his faith was about his sex life. I'm sure an old man had thoughts of what he wanted to do. Imagine peace, imagine joy, imagine happiness in your life. See, well, maybe Abraham did get happy. <laughs> but think, he thought out what he wanted to do with his wife. <laughs> he imagined it, he had to. He's a man. I'm a man. I understand. But imagine what you would do in your life. Imagine the goodness of God coming into your life. Amen. So be encouraged and be blessed with your imagination. <laughs>